uh, Yanni and I would like to talk about our uh, collaboration with the place called Asgur Museum, which is she is going to talk uh, more a bit later. And it was made in terms of Mark Jorkin's residency in Minsk this summer. And we had two events. Yanni is going to talk about the first one, and I'm going to talk about the second one. And the thing I wanted to explore uh, with this work is uh, using the museum space to run LARPs and in different forms. Yeah, so I'm going to tell you a bit about uh, the Zahir Asgur Museum, which is a memorial museum of uh, Belarusian sculpture who uh, used to do a lot of um, sculptures of museum or of Soviet leaders and writers, and they are mostly male. Um, and it's quite an atmosphere in there. Um, so nowadays the director of the museum is very open to all kinds of events like uh, performances, theater pieces or movie nights and concerts. Um, like a bit more about background uh, in Belarus that spring, uh, that, like before the event. Uh, so uh, there was uh, some, um, there was supposed to be a, a queer culture fest, Dotek, but it was banned by the authorities because uh, the Orthodox, Orthodox Church people uh, complained that it was taking place during Easter. Uh, then uh, we were supposed to run LARPs in the Asgur Museum uh, during the Minsk LARP festival, but, but again, uh, the authorities said that that won't do because uh, some of the topics that were treated in LARPs um, are not that good for the authorities. And then um, during the, uh, <coughs> on the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia and Biphobia, when the British Embassy hung um, LGBT plus la uh, uh, flag, um, the uh, Ministry of Internal Affairs posted on their websi uh, website that well we actually do not have qu queer people in Belarus and they are actually fake and uh, like European influenced um, yeah uh, so this is the background and then I was super lucky and happy to get into a project which is called Queer Art Activism Workshops uh, that uh, is a like a year project uh, with six workshops with different Belarusian artists that teach us techniques uh, of how they do LARP, uh, art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so on the, <laughs> on the first workshop there was like a round of introductions and I said that among other things I do LARP and people were excited because they've heard of LARP but were too afraid to try it uh, somehow. So little by little I talked them into like that idea that maybe you should try that and uh, then we talked to, uh, with Nastasia and said like that, yeah, that's a cool idea. And uh, we thought that uh, I say a little prayer, which is a shorter version of just a little loving, would be like a very nice LARP to, uh, for, for those people to try. And um, it's a LARP that treats, uh, that tells the story of um, gay community in New York in the 80s and treats such uh, topics as AIDS, death and friendship. Um, so, um, Mark invited us to uh, set that LARP in the museum and it was like put as an artwork or art piece or something, not um, gay LARP. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we ran it and uh, we got really nice feedback from the players uh, because they felt really safe to try LARP uh, with the people they already knew and um, that like they they got into that immersion and they really had like emotional um, they, they got really emotional afterwards and also that their um, that their experience was uh, influenced greatly by the museum atmosphere we, and it's like such a huge contrast those soviet leaders and patriarchy versus gay community mm -hmm. um, yes so that's how we did a lot for our workshop. Yeah, this was the first thing that we did there, but we uh, didn't stop and we did another thing. And this, uh, the second project was a bit different. Uh, while in the first one, uh, we kind of used the museum space as a contrast to what is going on in LARP. So it, it was kind of a meta level when you're, as a player, feel this atmosphere of uh, Soviet leaders and stuff and you play actually a queer LARP, it kind of gets you in a very emotional state. 
But in the second uh, project, we decided to use a completely different approach. So we decided to actually um, uh, see how the museum space can be uh, applied as a large setting. Or how can we, for, uh, how, how can we um, uh, shape a LARP around the museum setting? Uh, yeah. Oh. So we decided to do an LARP involving audience in this museum. Uh, we had different reasons for this. The first one was uh, that we, uh, in those, we never tried uh, audience LARP before, and it seems to be uh, there seems to be hype around LARPs involving audience. So we decided to bring it back to Belarus and try it out there. And the second reason was we wanted to. Uh, also open up our community to, for example, museum goers, as the LARP was the uh, participation in the LARP was uh, actually possible for any person who decided to go to the museum on that day and that time. And the third reason, again, we wanted to make museum space more interactive, so uh, the museum goers could actually uh, interact with the space in a different way instead of just watching and like or these weird sculptures and getting very scared. Uh, yeah, and we used, for this, we used an uh, approach of the uh, audience experience uh, creation uh, made by Nina Runa Essentrop, which introduced this uh, this year at Knutty Point. Um, this is a project that involves a group of uh, LARP designers who collaboratively create an audience experience uh, and who then uh, actually play the LARP as players, providing uh, and creating the experience for the audience members. So uh, Nina usually works with this <coughs> kind of separate idea uh, for each of her audience experiences. We wanted to work with the uh, museum space. So in the center of our creation process was the museum space and the way it affects us as people, <coughs> the LARP designers as people, uh, the, its symbolic value and its atmosphere. So this is how we created, um, uh, we kind of got together and we thought a little bit and we realized that all of us had this idea of this place being kind of like a, his, something connected to history, but not necessarily to history of Soviet Union, to history of this, like the leaders, but just a very strange place without a time, timeless place uh, containing history. And we decided to, we came up with an idea of uh, creating a LARP about a um, memory storage. So the museum became a memory storage of different kinds of memories. Uh, we had two reasons for this. The first one is it's kind of connected to the atmosphere of the, muse of the museum. And the second one, it uh, it's, uh, gets us away from this idea of the ideological idea, of the Soviet idea, which we didn't want to abuse because it's actually abused by lots of artists who work with this museum because it's a very obvious thing to, you know, to work with uh, Lenin or Stalin and stuff. Uh, so we didn't want to do this. Uh, yeah, and I also want to talk about the kind of things that we did during the LARP. The first one is, yeah, uh, this uh, image shows that the participants of the LARP, so the uh, players of the LARP, they all had the face paint of golden or uh, bronze or white color uh, just to make them kind of similar to the statues in the museum but also to uh, make them different from them because they could move and they could speak uh, instead of statues in the, in the museum. Uh, this also made the other statues kind of participants of the LARP. So they're also there and uh, for example, yeah, for example, players and audience could uh, actually uh, interact with statues as play not players, as characters in the LARP as well. Um, another thing that we used um, things for stenography, stenography to make it more playable and not that abstract, so there was different things. This is actually a girl from the audience who interacted with us. Uh, and the last thing that we did, we also set the very strict uh, rules and guidance for the audience to enter the room to feel both to feel comfortable for them and both not to make uh, players uncomfortable. So there was a list of rules of interaction uh, with the players and they could also sit and watch and they could interact uh, according to these rules. So there was a very uh, loose uh, structure for the audience to be there. Um, yeah, I think this is it. Yeah, thank you.